Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Olympus Reptiles, and I have been really thinking about something. I've kind of come up with some thoughts I want to share, and I think uh, these are things that we can all do to help keep our snakes much safer. Um, now, let me preface this by saying I'm not a doctor, I'm not a veterinarian, and I did not stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. But uh, I do have some experience, obviously. I've been doing this for a little while, not as long as some, less than others. I've had some great successes, and I've had some great failures, and I'm going to share some of that with you today. So if you want to use it, awesome. I think you should. I think it's a good idea for anybody. If you don't want to use it, that's fine too. You do you. Now, what we're going to be talking about is infectious disease in snakes. This is something that people have asked me about and all kinds of stuff, and I didn't really know how I wanted to approach it. Uh, we're going to talk about things like nidovirus, and we're going to talk about things like IBD, and all of these scary things, and whatever the next scary thing that's going to come, because guys, it's going to come, there's going to be another boogeyman hiding in the closet here very, very soon. You know, when I first started was one thing, and now it's this, and you know, there's crypto, all kinds of nasty bugs out there that your snake can get that can kill your snake, or your entire snake collection. If you're me, and you have this, trust me, you do lose a little sleep over that shit at night. You know, I mean, it took me years and years and years to build this, and I've been quite blessed. If something went through here and killed my entire collection, I'm, well, screwed, blued, and tattooed, as they used to say. It's not a good situation. Now, how are we going to go about preventing that? Let's first have a little fireside chat here, sit down and talk about diseases and how they work. One, the thing that comes in that always scares the hell out of everybody with, like, nidovirus is, is it airborne? Same thing was one with IBD. Is it airborne? IBD ended up, I believe, not being airborne last study I saw, but truth be told, I'm going to tell you it doesn't matter. I don't care if a disease is airborne. And you're going to be like, what? How can you not care? If it's airborne, it's going to get into one snake and spread through your collection like wildfire. It's not. I'm going to explain how it's not. I'm going to explain how it can't. I'm going to explain how you can take a few simple steps to prevent that from happening. Using what I've got here to show you. Uh, now, with that being said, Airborne disease means it can travel, it can live in the air, you know, we share the same air, we get sick. Think of all this coronavirus crap going on right now, six feet away, yada, 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 yada. Wear a mask, you don't cough or sneeze on people, you know, that kind of crap. The way most people get infected is they're going to touch a, a dirty infected surface, surface, right, and they're going to touch themselves. It's going to work no different here. So snakes respirate much, much slower than you, we do. <laughs> they don't use a whole lot of air. They're not breathing out. <sighs> like we are as much, or in. So a snake in this tub is likely not going to share virus-infected air with a snake in that tub. That ain't gonna happen. What about coughing and sneezing? They don't do that. So I don't have to really worry about coughing and sneezing. So the airborne aspect of the disease from them transferring from breathing one person to another is not really something I need to worry about. They're in their own separate little rooms, more or less, okay? That shit is not gonna happen. Okay, it's not. Chances that happen are very, very, very slim. The only time I would really be concerned with a sick snake going and giving it to another sick snake person to person would be with breeding. I and mean, they may share some very similar air there. So I could have a male that could infect two to three females if I had a male with NIDO and didn't know it. Or whatever. Because NIDO, they do think, might possibly be airborne. So, not a big concern. Yes, that would be a concern, breeding. But other than that, most of it's going to be because he may defecate or urinate in there. She's going to be it going through that during the breeding process so that could that could spread otherwise in the feces it's, it's their own feces so they're not going to poop out nidovirus unless they already have ding 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 nidovirus uh so you know you should still clean this is not a saying don't clean but that's not the concern so a couple things you need to think about one your hands and your tools these right here are my snake tools my hands hooks tongs whatever the hell i use this is how you're going to spread disease from one snake to another. What I mean is, if I were to go into this tub, pick up this snake, handle it, pick up its feces, pick up its urate, whatever, throw it away, clean, whatever I may do in that tub, okay? And I turn right around and go from that tub, close it, and I go to the next tub, and I pick up that snake, I clean, I do whatever. Now what am I doing? I'm touching an infected surface, and I'm going directly into another surface. Remember how we talked about disease spreads in humans? You touch something infected, and then you touch your mouth, eyes, or nose. I'm basically doing that for them. So that is where you're going to have an airborne disease spread amongst your collection. It's not going to spread in the air. It's going to spread from me touching it, touching it, touching it, touching it, touching it, touching it, touching it. It could also spread from a tool, touching a snake, touching a snake, touching a snake. So real simple way to fix that. If I open up this tub, 
and I check on the snake. I take her out, I dump her water in there, I handle her some. Really simple. Maybe my hook handles her. Woo, hi, hooky, how you doing? I put her back. <laughs> I give her some water. Now my water is not gonna ever touch in there. So I'm not too worried about this, okay? Cause I'm not sticking it in their collection. Now, if that snake was sick, what all would possibly have a little bit of virus on it? That hose could, we could wash that. My hands would and my tools would, so it's really simple. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna disinfect myself, disinfect any tool I might use. If I'm really concerned with it, I can come over here. I can disinfect my hose, you know, I was disinfecting the hose. That's all I'm doing. Just, I like disinfecting hoses. No, I don't. I like disinfecting my hose. I'm not gonna come disinfect your hose though, Kurt. Anyway, hose is disinfected, hooks disinfected, my hands are disinfected. That frees me up to then come over here, check this snake. I've killed all the germs, right? So now I can come, I can pick this snake up, I can check her, see how she's doing. We're in breed season, kind of see if I'm seeing growth out of her put her back but now again before I go to the next snake it's really simple I need to disinfect so we're gonna start trying to disinfect our tools every time we touch a snake or work in a snake's tub before I go to the next one yes I'm gonna spend more money in hand sanitizer this stuff is cheap okay <laughs> it's fine I don't think Kurt's gonna get on to me if I say hey, Kurt we need to buy more hand sanitizer he's like why are you telling me just go get it so not a big expense there to do that and you're going to prevent spread of disease amongst your collection a lot okay somebody's gonna say I'm wrong maybe I am but let's just think about logic we breathe slow we breathe shallow we're not pushing out lots of air in and out most of that's gonna be contained in here. It's not gonna be going everywhere. You're gonna tell me, what if a germ goes down here and crawls down and crawls in there? Okay, I'm gonna just do a little bit of quick math for you. I'm about 6'2", we'll say 265. Shut up, we're gonna say 265. Actually, that's not too far off. <laughs> anyway, and uh, if I go and I go hike five miles, and yes, people, I still do hike five miles on occasion, I'm kinda of tired, that's a good hike for me, okay? So 5,200 and some feet in a mile, that's me as walking 5, 10, 15, 20, 25,000 feet, at another 1,000, 200 some. I'm going about 26,000 feet. I am worn out. How big is a germ? It's microscopic, okay? Itty bitty, teeny tiny, itty bitty, teeny tiny, microscopic. For that germ to come from here, make that trip on its own, and go in here, it would be like me walking around the entire damn world. It's not happening, guys. It's not. That is not how that works. That, that is, they're not going to go, Wah! it's just they're going to have to be carried by something and then gone through by the animal. So I'm not too concerned with that. But we can certainly move them across. It's how we infect things. So some simple cleaning takes care of it. Somebody's going to say, what about gloves? What about gloves? One thing is, if the glove doesn't fit, you must acquit. Remember that. Ah, whew, got that thing on. What about gloves? Gloves are great, but if you've ever worked as a first responder or in a hospital or anything else that works with diseases, gloves are awesome. I wear them for work sometimes because I don't like to touch other people's blood. Gloves are, but let me tell you something. If I'm saying, I got gloves on, and I see this on videos a lot, I see people wearing gloves. That's cool, man. You do you. Uh, let's say I got gloves on. I go over here. I'm like, man, I got gloves on. I'm really good. I can check the snake. Look at her hanging out her water dish. Damn, she's pretty. She's doing good. Okay, I'll put her back. Now, I've got gloves on. I'm going to go over here and touch. But wait a minute. Some of my gloves. You can see there's some dirt. There's some water because she was in the water. Uh, guess what that means? Whatever that snake has on its skin is on my gloves. So if I were to go over here, open another tub, and touch another snake, then what am I doing? I'm transferring the same damn germy material. These gloves prevent you from getting germs on your hand. They don't prevent germs from being on the glove. So you can still transfer it unless you're touching her. Then every time you do that, you're changing gloves. See, I still know how to take those off. Look at that. 
Uh, here's the thing. That's A, a pain in the ass. Two, it's going to dry your hands out more in hand sanitizer. And three, it's going to be more expensive. It's much easier just to do that. Plus, if you get to the kind of a little bit of aloe vera, it feels kind of nice. And you're going to prevent disease from going through your collection <laughs> for the most part. The other thing you can do to prevent disease is treat. When you have mites, treat. When you don't have mites, treat. Uh, you know, preventive maintenance goes a long way to not having mites. And the first sign you ever get mites, treat that area. Treat all the neighboring snakes. If you have a big collection, you're going to see them sometime. I promise it does happen. Here's the thing. Mites themselves on a snake are not going to cause you a huge issue. It's more of like an annoyance. Think of like a dog with fleas, right? But that mite drinks blood. Again, you work, you pick up some little mites you don't see, you move them through your collection, they <laughs> transfer eggs and air, they've raised their on infected blood, whatever, you can spread disease through blood mites. That's how IBD is spread. Uh, that is going to be also a good way for nidovirus to spread. A lot of things are spread by blood mites. So if you control blood mite outbreaks the minute they happen, and you don't end up with blood mites spreading through your entire collection, when you get a blood mite over here, you take care of it, and you treat these ones as well, you get it all cared for before spread, and you disinfect Okay, you don't have to you don't have to live in fear of things like NIDO, IBD, and all these diseases. You should still take precautions. I'm still not going to put boa constrictors in my room. We have a different place for them. But because what if a blood mite outbreak happened there and didn't spread a little bit? Still take precautions. But you can control that. You can control your collection, and you can control uh, how much risk you have. Doesn't mean you can prevent everything. But if you just disinfect, it's like they kept saying, wash your hands, don't touch your face. Disinfect your hands before you touch your other snakes. You can touch your own snake, or one snake, but then disinfect in between every single snake. Kurt, anything you want to add? No. All right, guys, we've told you a way to do it. So let's, I'd like to see everybody start doing that. If you don't do it, and you get a huge outbreak, it's on you. And you're going to see me in videos try to remember to use this every time. It's going to take me a while to get in the habit because I haven't been doing it. This is something I've been racking my brain on what can I do, and that's what I came up with. And so you're going to see me make a conscious effort to do that. When other people come over, make a conscious effort to make them sanitize in between touching my damn snakes too. Kind of like you're at a reptile show. Pretend, pretend every day is a show and you'll have it kind of figured out. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.